Well, the big block is finally here. Let's unwrap it, take a look at it, look at the parts that we're gonna be throwing at it, and talk about what the goals are. Stick around. everybody welcome back to the garage an exciting day the big block is finally here and if you caught the last live show you know that we ended up going with a blueprint 598 short block yes the fry burger short block if you guys have not seen engine masters episode 36 go out and watch it because it was uh, some of the motivation for this build and why we're going with this 598 short block this is a standard deck about the biggest displacement that you can get out of a standard deck short block uh, you know, and it's, it's kind of one of those hybrid uh, Mark IV Gen 5 big blocks. So it has the one-piece seal, all that stuff. Forged rotating assembly and a pretty decent ring gap. I reached out to Big uh, Blueprint and said, hey, you know, what's the ring gap on this? And they're like, well, we don't plan on this being used for engine adders. And I was like, yeah, you know, default disclaimer because these things come with a warranty. Who cares about all that? But uh, the ring gap on there is perfectly fine for up to maybe 250 shot of nitrous or even seven, eight pounds of boost on something like this. You should not have to deal with button the ring lands together as long as everything's tuned properly. But I did get it out, get it on the stand. I have not unwrapped it yet. So this will be the first time for me seeing it also. So uh, make sure if you wanna follow the rest of this build because I'll go in and show you putting all this stuff together. I got a table full of parts. We're still waiting on some that we'll talk about, but hit that subscribe button. Button, hit that like button and get this stuff out to other people. It would help me out a bunch. It's the quickest and easiest thing that you can do. So without further ado, let me kind of reset the camera up here and we'll pull this bag of plastic off this thing and let's take a look at this motor. So it's been really hard to get the rest of the parts in. There's been a lot of shipping delays. A lot of these parts, you know, are not just off the shelf parts for this build uh, because we're, we've kind of got a goal here that I would like to hit and that is you know, I think that we're going to be possible to hit 800 horsepower naturally aspirated with this setup. And there's a couple reasons why. Uh, for one, if you go watch Engine Masters, uh, that episode 36 that I talked about where they use the same exact block on their build, they do a couple things a little bit different. They're running a little bit more aggressive cam uh, and they're running a little bit more uh, heads that flow a little bit more. They're running... Um, well, they might be running Brodix heads also. I'm Yes, they are. I'm running a Brodix head. Going to be running a Brodix BB2 Extra on this. It's a 365 head. Uh, but the nice thing about mine versus the one that they ran is it has a smaller combustion chamber. So we will actually have a little higher compression ratio. The ones they tested on Engine Master uh, was running... Hmm, 10 to 1 or so, we should be a little bit closer to 11 to 1, which make it a good pump gas uh, 93 octane motor. Uh, but, as I said, we are not, we're only getting about 370 CFM airflow at 700 lift. We're not going above 700 lift. In fact, we're going to about 690 on our cam. Uh, whereas what they were running was uh, something like a 780 lift. Very aggressive. I didn't want something beating the valve train quite that hard on this setup, but if we decide that we do want to go more lift down the road, we just have to upgrade the springs and the heads and swap the cam out. So it is not out of the realm of possibility to run a more aggressive setup down the road and get some more out of the head. But as it stands now, as I said, having a head that flows 376, at this compression ratio is gonna give us a motor that's gonna come in probably using the uh, airflow calculations around 820 to 830 horsepower, give or take. So, open her up here. Oh yeah. She is gorgeous. Man, that is just a huge pour. Wow. Your engine has not been pre-lubed. <laughs> of course it's not. There's nothing attached to it. But thank you. Let's jump in here, take a look at the bore. Just clean as a whistle. Looks gorgeous. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm just, we're like the head should be showing up here in the next week or two. Uh, the cams is about two weeks out. And then that's the majority of what we're missing still because I got about everything else to assemble this thing. Uh, you know, it is going to be a raised exhaust port head. So where we are going to possibly run into an issue is on the uh, headers, so I have not ordered headers yet because an engine this big needs very big primaries, like two and a quarter primaries, and I'm afraid we're probably gonna have to custom do the headers, but I don't know if I'm gonna be stout enough to flip this thing over on this piddly little stand. 
Ha 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 ha! So very excited to see that this setup, which is their, their base setup for the, the 598, is utilizing K1 rods. I had questions on whether or not how many of these parts are being built in-house, things like that. As you can see, we're running four bolt main caps, which is awesome. This thing's going to handle all the power. Forge crank, but I can't tell it's a K1 rod because I can see the K1 brandings, which I'm totally cool with. I mean, that is a quality rod. In fact, that's the rod that I run on the Super Auto, or at least the Brander rod. And I thought just from looking at the design, I was like, man, those look exactly like the K1s that I installed. Fortunately, I can't seem to get any information off what kind of pistons they're running on this setup. Uh, let me see if I can find my shop light. I mean, I can see a part number on there, but I've searched the part number. Nothing comes up on it. Uh, not a big ordeal, as I said. We're not looking to throw a huge power adder set up at this thing because the idea behind this is to make reliable horsepower, uh, big horsepower, as I said, like 800-some horsepower uh, that is very streetable, very reliable, and... Uh, that's why I chose this setup. Okay, so I've got the uh, the laptop pulled up here, and let's we'll just start right here on the Blueprint Engines 598 cubic inch Pro Series crate engine. This is the short block, comes in about $5,700, so a big chunk of change right off the front. We'll talk about a couple alternatives after we go through the rest of the parts. I'll show you the running tally of what I've got, and it should be probably about everything down to the seals, gaskets, nuts, bolts, uh, engine mount, all the stuff that we need to get this thing up and going except for the headers and that'll probably be another fifteen hundred dollars on top of what we see as the final tally on this but it all starts here uh you know compression ratio ten and a half to one with 117 heads we're running 115 so we're going to be a little bit higher than the ten and a half to one forge crank forge pistons uh you know it says it's a four 0.595 bore, which I believe is actually technically a 4.6 bore. I don't know. I'm not going to measure it. I don't care. They spec this thing together. They put it together. It should be perfectly fine. There's not a lot of information on this stuff, which is kind of annoying the way that Blueprint does this. Even if you were to go over and look at their, their uh, engines, their GN compatible crate engines, and go into the big block crate engines and look at a uh, complete big block 598 right here, ten thousand dollars starts at ten thousand dollars and here you can see what you get out of these things but it's also based on the accessories now mind you the price that i'm about to show you is with all the accessories uh except in this case this one does include uh all alternator and stuff like that so 12.89 for a top to bottom ready to rock drop in block that puts 724 horsepower out well 724 and 681 we're going to be making well over 700 foot pounds of torque i have no doubts on that on that as far as this setup goes now how deep into the 800s on the motor that we can get is going to be questionable as i said based on how efficient the heads and the design that we go with and all that stuff so we might have a little issue uh but and on top of it i have spec'd out a cam uh let's pull it up here in a second that is a crower cam is who we're going to go with and it is a uh cam designed to make power in the usable meat of the rpm range so it's a 110 lsa which is going to make it a lot more drivable a lot idle a lot better things like that and uh you know the the specs on it because they don't show it for anything bigger than a 502 but even on a 502 is to start making power by like 2800 and then peak power at 6500 so uh, that puts us right in the meat of the area because those numbers are going to move around we're going to make a little more power before 2800 with a bigger motor but at the same time we're going to hit peak power a little bit earlier generally but uh so one big thing that we do have to do is go ahead and get uh, new engine mounts because we're going into an X body and it, the, for a classic car, a muscle car, the engine bay is very sh narrow and tight in these things. They're not quite as big as something like a Chevelle. Uh, so we have to take into consideration that this thing has to sit where the factory uh, big block sat in order to get everything else to kind of fit around it. And then even with the exhaust race ports, uh, you know, we're, we're probably going to have some issues because we're moving those things up, uh, I don't know, 0.375 inches or so on that. Uh, but, of course, I'm going over, going to run an energy suspension, pure uh, polyurethane kit on there, keep everything kind of in place. And then Mylodon. We're running Mylodon everything, and these things are not cheap. Uh, as you can see, the pan alone is $389. 
that is just the pan. You need the windage tray, you need the baffle, you need the bolts for the windage tray, you need the bolts for the pan, you need the bolts for the baffle, you need the pickup for a myelodon, you need the high flow oil pump, you need the oil pump rod. Uh, you know, you look at this and you say, okay, $389, wow, that's an expensive oil pan. Yeah, the oil pickup lubrication system on this thing runs you closer to $700 all in on that stuff. So keep that in mind. This will nickel and dime you to death. That's what you have to be aware of if you're using a short block build like this. Uh, we are then looking at our Crower cam, which is the 1521 cam if you want to go look up the specs on it, but we'll hit them real quick. It is a advertised 295-307. Uh, so we're looking at uh, duration at 50 is 262, 273. And then we're going to be running it with 1.7 ratio rocker arms for a 683-683 gross lift. And then as I said, uh, their specs on a 502 uh, brings low RPM at 2550, peak torque at 4050. I was wrong about that. Low RPM as well. I was talking about 2550. So you won't, we shouldn't need too crazy of a uh, torque converter to hold this thing back. And then, of course, peak uh, horsepower comes in at 6,000 with a red line of 6,500. Now, I'll remind you, that is for a motor that's almost 100 cubic inches smaller. And so if you were to go through and look at how it affects the numbers, everything gets shifted down the bigger the displacement goes on it. So then, of course, we're going to run a Cloy's uh, dual roller timing chain, you know, solid reliable nothing fancy there not necessarily you know you have the timing adjustment on the uh, crank sprocket not worried about getting some kind of fancy apparatus up on the timing chain itself i'm not really the kind of guy that wants to go through and dial in the cam timing to the nth degree and then but we will be running the coils uh timing cover front cover and the reason i'm doing this one is because it has the built-in cam button on it that i like so i like being able to have the cam button being able to set that thing on the fly and then if we do decide that we want to get some of that minute and in, uh, horsepower increase by going over to a different timing setup where we can adjust the cam timing itself on the cam uh, this has provisions to do that without having to pull the front timing cover on it Roller rockers. We are going with a solid roller cam, so we're going to be running the uh, Comp Indirect Solid Mechanical uh, Roller Lifter Set. These things used to get a bad rap back in the day, but uh, I think nowadays they've kind of gotten everything sorted out on this stuff, so we're going to give them a shot. Uh, you know, as I said, once again, we're not beating the hell out of this drivetrain, uh, our valve train, so these things should hold up for what we're looking for. And tied to those is, of course, we're going to run the cam. Uh, comp cam ultra gold rocker arms at 1.7 rocker ratio uh, pretty happy with what I'm seeing so far you know uh, it's it's kind of one of those ordeals to spend the money don't spend the money you can get super expensive in a uh, Tied back to this though, we will be running the Brodick stud girdles. I do, I managed to pick up a set of Brodick stud girdles uh, for our heads uh, and Okay, so here's the stud girdles that we're running. Uh, you know, they're about 325 bucks. Fits the BB heads, series of heads. Uh, comes with the poly locks and all the stuff that you need to do it. And it's just a little peace of mind in case we do want to get up to that 7,000 RPM range on this motor. I don't ever see us really taking it beyond 7,000 RPMs. But I'll be interested to put it on a dyno and see where the peak power is. And, and having the ability to keep your valve train in check and push up beyond that point. Uh, because, you know, there's not a whole lot of limiting factors on a build like this. We've got a lot going in the right direction to be able to make huge power. We don't want to necessarily cut it off before we hit that peak point. But at the same time, uh, you know, it's kind of that peace of mind of saying, okay, let's keep everything in line. Let's make sure that the stud rockers aren't getting kind of wonky. And as I said, uh, they're 325 bucks. I picked them up for, I can't remember, probably 250 or something like that. Uh, so let's look at the heads. We went with the BB2 extra cylinder heads, the 365 intake ports, uh, you know, the 2.3 intake uh, valve diameter with the uh, 1.88 exhaust valve. Uh, the, this, this setup right here is a little bit of the milder BB2 extras because it is designed to max out at a 700 lift cam. So you can get these that will go up to beyond 800 lift uh, cams, you know, and so they're gonna have different springs, retainers, all that stuff. You know, and at the end of the day, that wasn't what we were looking for on this build, but we still wanted to be able to have the ability to hit that without having to go to a whole new uh, head. And so we can do that. As I said, literally a spring change out on this thing, and this thing could be running an 800 lift cam, no problem. 
I don't see us ever doing that here. That's not kind of how we do things around here. We're more likely to throw a 200, 250 shot of nitrous on here, or maybe even a centrifugal supercharger to make up that extra power. And we don't need the additional lift. Uh, you know, and everything compounds. Whenever you're talking about supercharging something on here, uh, you're talking about seven PSI on a uh, big block motor. You're used to talking, you know, we talk a lot about seven PSI on an LS and it's like, oh yeah, man, I'm running seven PSI on an LS and now my LS makes 600 horsepower. We run seven PSI on this thing and it's gonna make 1200 horsepower. So keep that in mind, it scales completely different. And that's one of the main reasons of going with a big block on this build is that the, the, the horsepower scales at a completely different rate, uh, range because of the displacement. And we have such a big amount of displacement because we're gonna talk here in a second about all the different alternatives that we could have done for the same price or cheaper on this. But at the end of the day, there's no alternative that we could have ran that you could put seven PSI on it and make 400 plus horsepower additional on the 800 that this thing is gonna make stock. So last but not least, we're gonna be running the Edelbrock uh, XT intake. It's kind of like the old uh, TPI injection intakes, but of course this one will run a 102 millimeter throttle body. We're obviously going fuel injected since we've already been working on the fuel injection setup on this stuff. So uh, I managed to snag one of these off of eBay and actually I think I got it for uh, 75 less than what it was here. These are not in stock anywhere, the, the, the bare ones and the black ones. I really wanted a black one because I'd really like to have a lot of black hanging off this motor. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to wait until January, February, March for the intake manifold and I wanted to run the ProFlow XT, uh, you know, and this is rectangle port, everything's rectangle port on this setup. This is what I wanted, so whenever I had the chance to snag one, I snagged one. Of course, you have to buy the fuel rails separately. They're about 150 bucks. So, what has all of this cost so far? You know, not including time and labor that I've put into it and getting all these parts together and stuff like that and what's gonna to take to assemble it. Just the bare materials, if you were wanting to do something like this, $12,234.94, and that should be within a couple hundred dollars. It's not going to be on the long side. It's at least this much. I know for a, a total stone cold fact that I've at least spent $12,234 uh, on this, and that's not including the ECM to control this thing, obviously, since that thing's still on the small block. If you were to toss that in, that's another $1,700, $1,800 right there. And then all the uh, coils, injectors, things like that. And so, uh, you know, this all said and done with the headers in, uh, this engine combination in the Nova is probably going to have cost about seventeen dollars to $18,000. So nothing to shake a stick at, as I said. It's, it's uh, kind of makes you stop and think, man, uh, why? But it all kind of circles back to that idea of uh, wanting to make serious amounts of naturally aspirated horsepower on this setup for drivability's sake. And this thing is just going to be not under any load whatsoever to make 800 horsepower all day long. Can take it down the highway for a cruise across America and it's not going to miss a beat. And we're going to be doing that because we're going to be taking this thing on drag week. And I wanted something that would be not wound so tight that I have to worry about throwing a rod through something, yada, da, 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 you know, all those issues that we get into whenever we uh, get into high horsepower setups. And so this is a very mild built motor that makes a ton of horsepower and has a ton of potential, uh, but you know, it costs a little bit more money to play the game like that. You know, we could have gone an LS, could have done an LSA easily. I could get a full crate motor LSA with everything attached to it for less than, you know, less than 12,000 bucks. You know, a new crate motor, not even a, a uh, pull one out of a car. You're talking about pulling things out of a car. We could have done an LS7, an LSA. Uh, probably could have done most of an LS, uh, LSX 454 even uh, compared to this. But at the end of the day, we're still at that point where we're, trying to make the same amount of horsepower with way less displacement and we start straining things on those motors we start we start taking them to the ragged edge to get that kind of horsepower whereas this thing is going to idle like your you know your your grandma's 350 and her uh, you know her 72 uh, malibu that only made 200 horsepower the thing's going to idle great it's going to get great gas mileage it can run off of pump gas this thing probably would be able to run off of uh 89 without an issue uh, the compression ratio is low enough, you know, we're not 
throwing so much anger at it to have to r- warrant running, uh, you know, blends E85, race gas, C16, stuff like that. We can run this thing off of pump gas, make tremendous amounts of power. And then at the end of the day, uh, like we always do, we'll throw a power adder at it. I can guarantee you we're going to, uh, we're going to throw nitrous at this thing. There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, I've already talked to our sponsors, Nitrous Express. We're going to be doing a direct port on the ProFlow uh, XT uh, intake manifold. Be one of the only ones that's probably been done so far. It's going to look super cool. That's part of the reason why I wanted to run that intake manifold is because I think that thing will look so amazing with a direct uh, nitrous injection set uh, set up on it. So, uh, And then you know me. I mean, I've been known to throw a Pro Charger on a thing or two. And so I've always wanted a Pro Charge Big Block. Uh, but once again, I'm not looking to make 15 PSI on a, you know, an F3 on this thing and, uh, you know, trying to make 1800 horsepower on this. That's for one, the car has a lot that's going to need done to it and able to handle the horsepower that we're going to be throwing at it just with this combination in, in factory trim in a, but, uh, it gives us a great foundation and it's just going to be an awesome car. Hey, listen, everybody, that's the wrap up on the big block. It is here. There will be videos very soon. As I said, we're really waiting on the cam and the heads. Once the cam and the heads get in, we can start assembling the top side. We can get the uh, roller rockers installed, uh, start measuring for uh, push rod length because we still have to get uh, push rods ordered, uh, things like that. And I think we're waiting on a couple small parts, maybe the oil pump. A lot of this stuff's just back ordered. But big shout out to all the people that are working in this industry to try and get these parts out. I know it's really hard given a lot of the raw materials for the American made stuff is still coming from China. Then a lot of these parts are still coming from China. Whether or not, you know, uh, we try to support these American companies, some of these parts are still coming out. And even whenever you're spending big money like this, you know. I'm guessing that the oil pump that is not shown up yet is probably because it's manufactured in China. And in, despite being a, uh, I can't remember what kind of is, Melling's high volume oil, oil pump or something like that. So, but big shout out to the people, you know, that are working at the place like Jags, uh, Summit Racing, Speedway, uh, where we go to get all of our parts. And then, of course, all the manufacturers that we get our parts from for, for keeping this industry going through these trying times. So I appreciate each and every one of you out there. And then, of course, I appreciate all the guys and girls out there that are subscribers that watch this stuff, that find it interesting, that share it. And, uh, you know, it's I, I am deviating from the standard tuning platform, but this is something that I've wanted to do. And so it just comes natural to go ahead and document it as we go through it. And then there's going to be tuning. We will be tuning an EFI 598 cubic inch big block Chevy port injection. Uh, coil near plug ignition, the works, this thing's going to run like a beast. You don't want to miss it. Stick around. You know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.